Hello, this is Norm Scott, uh, and I thought it'd be fun for some of you rascals out there to uh, watch me drawing two panels of a new Otters comic. This is from their latest one. Uh, it's called Fishing a Tourney. Uh, it is sped up, obviously, because I'm sure nobody wants to spend two or three hours actually watching the process here. Uh, you can see this is essentially my layout, uh, which is to say that I don't really do a layout. Also, uh, that character to the left there, that's a completely new one. That is being drawn like a, literally exists as a couple of lines in the script. Uh, some people have the resources to actually design characters ahead of time. I prefer to wing it because, you know, I've... We aren't immortal. We, we will eventually pass this mortal coil. Do I really want to spend time designing them twice? I don't think so. And that's why, you know, eye patch, no eye patch. I uh, go back over there. Nah, don't want that hand. Dress, maybe. Sure, why not? Yes, it does lend a slapdash feel to the whole thing. But at the same time, it takes too long already. That's the long and short of it. Am I going to apologize? I am not. Seaweed there, by the way. That's, uh... She's supposed to be kind of a sea witch sort of character. I guess. Maybe. They're drawn in. That's a ticket. Uh, I should also mention, by the way... Oh, first of many mistakes in this, by the way. I should also mention I am... <coughs> Sorry. I am getting over a head cold, which is why my voice sounds like this. Uh... And it's also why you're going to be experiencing a lot of uh, coughing fits in the course of this. Uh... It is not, sadly, the reason that you're hearing us uh, and awkward pausing. That just comes with the territory. When I don't actually write this stuff ahead of time, it comes a lot slower to me. You see, oh, I'm putting in a lot of greebles inside the... None of this is really thought out or at all. And repositioning there, yeah... The, the truth of the matter is that <coughs> I have an extremely slapdash style when I'm actually making cards. Here's something interesting. This is... Uh, the otters were never really designed to be viewed from any angle but, uh, but the front, which is why when I try to draw them from the back, they look like kind of sort of mosquito-y sort of things. But that's the essence of the cartooning process, or mine at least, is that Get it good enough, hope nobody spends enough time on the panel to really make a difference. That's probably supposed to be an anchor there. Sure, why not? And a guy walking. And yeah, close enough. Now, your penciling style generally is going back... Oh, yeah, I forgot to draw in Sid there. And Andy. Uh, they'll be coming in fairly soon. There we are. Andy's a, especially in the penciling, uh, in this program, I'm using Manga Studio, or I realize that's technically an incorrect pronunciation, Manga Studio, but uh, I don't care. But drawing in Andy, you can only zoom in so far, and the pencil only has uh, such a, a fine line on it, so he's mostly, in fact, most of my, my stuff here are scribbles until I actually get into the inking stage. In this panel, the uh, the old sea witch is indicating uh, the Museum of Maritime Mystery, so that's what I'm drawing right there. It's not Uncle Scrooge's money bank. A giant fish head entrance. With the little dilly bobber there, that's the... Uh, is it a football fish? What is that? Angler fish. Angler fish. <coughs> I'm sick. Shut up. And here's sort of air trying to draw. Yeah, yeah, that's scamp, by the way. And there we go. Just get rid of it entirely. Wasn't worth the trouble. Hope you pardon my silence. I actually am mildly entranced seeing myself do this quite so quickly. I haven't really recorded my process before. 
You will notice that I've already put the uh, the speech balloons in before I draw. Most people don't do this. Most people will put the speech balloons in after the art, and that's actually the smarter thing to do. But I do not have the... Uh... There's a lot of words in my comics, and if I put in the words afterwards, almost certainly they'd end up covering up something important. Unlike, for instance, Max's nose, not important. Nobody ever clamored for that. And again, a series of little scribbles to sort of indicate Andrew T. Ant. The fish staff. Eyeball. And best attempt at a mouth there. Now, a lot of people actually uh, who who are good at anatomy, I should mention, will go in and try to, uh, you know, do out the entire geometry of the body before they put in a face or features. And to that I say, I'm not that good. So I just kind of rough in the whole thing as a block and then go back in and, you know, scribble it and worry it until it finally looks sort of like something. In this case, it looks like an elderly Kenny G missing an eyeball. And there you're. The back and forth is just to kind of space out the lettering so it, uh, so that when I finally go in to ink it, uh, they'll be, they won't all crowd to one side or another. Which, by the way, sometimes I completely forget to do and they still end up crowding to one side or the other. <coughs> Smart thing to do in this day and age. I am sorry for the constant coughing, by the way. I'm sick. I'm sick. Hey, but we're inking. That is a. Uh, it's going way faster than it does in real life. I'm, I really am envious of the uh, the program version of this. If you're looking to get some advice on inking tips, I'm not very good at inking, so I, I don't know if I have anything I can offer you. Uh, I do try to put on the... There's a little smoothing option on the Manga Studio. Oh, there. That's the kind of quality you get. I decided that she needed a dead fish on there, but I hadn't actually penciled one in, so... There, I drew in a dead fish on her belt. But uh, Manga Studio gives you a, a bunch of different options for smoothing. Oh, and there, uh, you'll, you'll see more of this in just a... <coughs> Pardon me, let me get a drink here so I don't die on microphone. Ugh. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and you can see that the uh, the pencil marks as I <coughs> ah yeah well if I am gonna die on microphone at least I'm I got witnesses uh, but you can see that the pencil marks don't really correspond to where the actual inking takes place. Now I know a lot of people, and it's almost certainly the better option if you have the time to do so will pencil in extremely tight. Like, they'll do the first layer, then they'll go back with the blue pencil and actually clean up pencils. And, uh, yeah, I don't clean up my pencils. Why bother? Like, you can see right there, you sort of, yeah, good enough, dude. And then you just sort of hope that nobody looks at Chip too close after that. Hey, look at that, see? I am a dead fish drawing dynamo, just freehand all of that. And the flies, didn't plan for the flies, just putting them in. Spur of the moment, bit of a maverick. And right there, Max is getting the plunger cleaned on him. Looks good, looks real good. <coughs> <coughs> I will say, uh, for what it's worth, this actually goes a lot faster than it did back in the old pen and paper days. Uh, one of the big advantages being that I... You don't have to worry too much about mistakes in the digital age because there is an undo button. That didn't happen back in the days when I was doing this on a piece of Bristol with microns. It used to be, in the old days, uh, like when I was growing up and really... There we go, see, so try to make sense of the couple of scribbles with the... And the I am really zoomed in there, you can see... And yeah, uh, again, but uh, as I was saying, when I was a kid, when I was 
you know, interested in art. I was like like a lot of people really interested in, you know, Marvel comics, that sort of thing. That was the uh, the era where Jim Lee was kind of uh, biggest thing going for him. And I was really interested in finding out what kind of materials that artists used. So I'd I look them up and I'd <coughs> pardon. Look up the Bristol paper, I look up the you know, what weight they were using, what uh, size, microns, and I'd actually go out and, by golly, I'd save up, I'd get them. And then I learned, oh, you also actually have to be good at art in order to do that stuff, so, yeah, that was a shame. <coughs> I am strongly opposed, by the way, of people being able to buy their way into some kind of job or skill set. Unless it's something that I personally can afford, then I'm all right with it. Eyeballs, eyeballs are weird, but you got to get the eyeballs more or less correct because that is the first thing that people focus on. Even if they're just a pair of dots, that's going to be the first thing that draws the eye is the other eyes. <coughs> and once more from the back with a mosquito-y max. And he's got a particularly hard case because, yeah, he doesn't actually have any eyeballs to be viewed from the back, so I'm drawing his sunglasses against no way to tell. Keeping that one in uh, black and white helps because then you don't really know if that's supposed to be the back of his eyelids or his head. And he's a little bigger here, so I actually can get a little detail into the hands there. Oh, isn't he so cute? And... Okay, now this is... Uh, in the old days, I used to consider any kind of computer assistance on, like, the line work to be absolutely cheating. It was, uh, you know, because I knew how hard it was to draw straight lines, just uh, freehand. And I felt that you really had to commit to it. You really had to. It showed that you were actually taking the time to do this stuff. And what I have come to realize in my old age now is that... Yeah, there's no reason to do that. It is way easier to use the assist on it. And you know how many people, since I've started using it, have said, Man, you are a cheat. Zero. They don't care. The truth of the matter is, most of the time, people do not look at this stuff long enough. In fact, you know, if I actually looked into the, uh, the time it took to read these two panels versus the time it actually takes me to make them, I would be so depressed, I would probably have to take my own life. Which is one of the reasons that I don't, by the way. Now, I uh, kind of ghosted the, the other inking layer because I gotta delete... <coughs> yeah, erase the lines that are going to cross over on those. And it's uh, easier to keep them separate if you got one a little bit of grayed out there. And try to draw the anchor. This is one of the problems of uh, of not cleaning up, is especially on like the technical stuff. You're kind of leaving it all to your future self to make sense of the crap that you've strewn across the page. Like, what is this supposed to be? Was this a net? Was this seaweed? Nope, it's apparently a net now. And I guess that's a hanging lantern, sure. And, yeah, just there in random crate. You can tell I come from the video game disciplines. And then you sort of draw in that thing. Yeah, there, kind of. That. Are those, and... Barnacles, maybe, or rust, or I don't know. I'm afraid that's the uh, the fifth or sixth guy I've drawn with a fishing hat on in this one. I'm not really creative in my extras. That's supposed to be the top of a pier or something. And a barrel. I come from the, uh, the Elder Scrolls school where you can never have too many random barrels or random crates in a scene. There's probably something interesting in them. Let the viewer guess. And again, this is going through on a uh, second layer, so I'll go back and erase any of the bits that are intersecting. 
<coughs> right there, yeah, there we go. Uh, realize as the picture gets more complete, there's really less to make commentary on. So as the picture itself gets more interesting to look at, the commentary will get more and more boring. Zoom. Now the detail is usually, uh, I will say one thing is that as you get closer to a, a complete picture, it actually gets a lot more fun to work on. The bits where you're just uh, filling in little pieces of, you know, stuff that doesn't exist, those can be really tedious, but the detail part, you're basically just making the picture that already exists look good. <coughs> well, look better, I'm, I'm not gonna. Fall prey to my own hubris there. There are different layers to these things. Yeah, yeah giant ship wheel. It's a maritime museum, why not? I keep getting hang up on scale. And again, you can see that the uh, the spacing of the letters really just a, a sort of approximation. I move them over to whatever looks good on that one. Also worth mentioning that obviously I'm not bothering to make that look like any kind of typesetting. It's literally just a drawing of a uh, of letter. <coughs> Convey that there are some letters on the building, whether they're well done or not. Like I said, most people are going to look at this at you know what, 30 seconds. Hey, and I guess that's supposed to be some kind of sign, maybe beside the there. And I actually write out entrance because it's really crudely drawn, so who can say that it's supposed to look like that? An ashtray or umbrella stand, maybe? Ticket counter? Who can say? And a little bit of weathering, patching. Clearly the giant fish head with somebody's labor of love inside this little village. All right, now we're finally getting into some faces. And I usually do those uh, towards the end. I don't know why, precisely. Uh, part of it's because it is going to be, most of it's going to be done with a uh, different size brush than the, than the large one. I <coughs> haven't really explained the sizing. If you're, uh, if you're an artist, you already know why you do the different line weights. But... Uh, but generally, you'll be doing, you know, broader for stuff closer up and uh, fine for detail and that sort of thing. And uh, my own personal, you know, what's the word, personal technique, if we can call it that, is I, uh, I generally do everything of the same line weight at the same time so I don't have to spend my time flicking back and forth on, uh, on pen sizes because, you know, that would take, like, literally half a second to do and who has that time there we go now we're actually filling in some of the detail work on these uh, little line there put a little vermicelli in the hair that's right a little frocking and these and this stuff is I mean you can see it's nothing exciting it's usually just adding wrinkles or contours where where they might more or less make sense. It really is literally just extra stuff to where it looks like it should have it. A lot of this is just getting rid of what would normally be large, empty areas. Uh, hair obviously has its own textures, and that's really not... not uh, where I'm looking for. It's not really there to capture the actual flow of the hair so much as it is to just break up what would normally be a big old space of, you know, a flat flap of hair, essentially. And a little wood grain on the old staff of fish. 
Try to put in the detail on the actual otters themselves is kind of, because uh, they are so cartoony, there's really, oh, I, there's really not much you can put on them. Sorry, I was distracted by, uh, here I'm putting in the black. Take a thick brush, going in and adding in your uh, <coughs> large areas of dark. Very important on a black and white comic. Uh, this is what, you know, you're putting in your shadows, you're putting in stuff to draw the eye. They're real strip. And you can see that this doesn't really correspond to like uh, anything that would be so where I'm looking for. Uh, you can see that that's not really corresponding to any kind of universal light source. It should. Uh, I'm not saying this is the technique you should have. I'm saying it really doesn't matter that much on something that is uh, this sparsely shaded. Basically, on all the cartoony comics, the, uh, the lighting's pretty much coming right from above, unless it's, you know, literally hard light. There, a little bit of the old under neck, get the waddles going there. And uh, the black areas, when you're actually doing them, it's hard to tell what, like, if you just make a couple of marks uh, in the general area that they're going to be uh, without, you kind of have to take it on faith on some of this that it actually is going to look good at the end. Because while you're doing it, if you divorce any of these uh, marks from from the process, like if you're just, uh, you know, why would you have just a giant black spot on the back of somebody's head? And uh, if you're really just looking one at the other, it does not look that good. Uh, but <coughs> in the context of the larger panel, it uh, it looks a lot more deliberate, a lot more intelligently thought out. Now, here I'm starting to put in some of the tone work, and the first thing I've done on these is drawn a... Uh, putting in a large area of tone, and now I'm actually erasing out clouds from the tone. That's a... That one may actually be useful to somebody at some point if you didn't want to have a... Uh, didn't want to draw in a cloud with an actual black outline around it. Although I guess you could also just erase the outline after you finished. Who knows? Uh, but one thing that you may or may not have noticed, and one thing that I did not notice while I was doing this, is that I did not remember to do this on the tones layer. This is actually going on the same layer as my ink, which means at this point, if I have to go back and change anything on the ink, I can't. And, uh, you also notice I didn't bother to save any of this right now, so we're just kind of winging a prayer that this turns out usable. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, other coughing fit. And more toning. I actually do remember to change the layer when I get to the uh, the second panel here. Now, one of the uh, there's a a weird thing with. Manga Studios uh, toning options that I didn't really... I still don't really have a hang on why they chose to do it that way, but the uh, the tone does not have a multiply effect. That is to say, if you're doing it, uh, like if you have a layer of tones and then another layer of tones above it, while you're working on it, it will look like it's multiplying, but it's actually not. It's because uh, the tones... Uh, I'm sure most people know this, but the tones are just little tiny dots put really close together. Uh, the actual image, if you zoomed in all the way, you would see that there is no actual gray tone to it. It is literally just little dots all the way around. And the reason is, so if you needed to put this into a print, uh, you'd be able to just to set it, it'd be a straight black and white document with the appearance of gray tones in it. And, uh, Sorry, I, I got off track there. The tone work looks like it'll, like if you put a, uh, you know, 15% tones on top of 15% tones inside the window while you're working on it, it looks like you're adding, you're actually adding up to 30% tone, but that's not how it works in real life. When you actually export the image to a JPEG or a PNG or whatever, uh, 
it just ends up looking at exactly 15% because the little tiny dots are spaced exactly on top of each other. So inside the inside the uh, program, it looks like you're multiplying, but you're really not. So when I do multiple tone weights, that is, if I have to do a darker tone next to it, it all has to be done inside the same window. <coughs> And that was probably the least interesting thing I'm going to say today. Although there's a you know minute or two left of this, so who knows. Now, you can barely see it on this because there's not a, uh, a lot to do it, but I'm putting in the little lines of straight white here. Uh, just little highlights. If you've got a darker tone all the way through, then you can get away with a lot more interest with, uh, with white lines, but... Since this is taking place in the daytime and I didn't want to put in an entire layer of dark through this, there's only a couple of places you can actually have highlights show through. <coughs> but, you know, more or less. And, uh, little extra shadow there. And, well, the old who's it's, what's it's. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I literally just go back in and erase the dividers. I also don't put in the uh, the tails that uh, the speech balloons use until the very end, just in case I have to move some of the speech balloons while I'm making the art. Uh, good layout will save you from having to do that, but like I said, I don't believe in good layout. They're sort of just trying to find a place that doesn't cross over anything important. And over here, and more or less, that's the finished picture. That is uh, panel one and panel two, and that's uh, that's all we got. Fancy, huh? <laughs>